Hi guys, Jeremy here with thecustomgeek.com and I want to go over uh, upgrading the firmware on a DSO Nano. Uh, I'm doing this with a version 2, but this firmware is also applicable if you have version 1. The firmware we're going to be installing today is the Benef firmware. Uh, the links are below on the site. And so you can see that you can end up with this folder called uh, UM0412. This is a diffuse installer. And uh, if you take this guy and you just launch this program, it'll go through setup. I've already done it on this machine, so I'm not going to do it and uh, save you the long, boring setup. It's ju it's just a, it's actually not that long at all, but it, you DCS everything to death. There's nothing special about that setup. Um, I do want to show you when you uh, when you launch the program here. So we're going to go to start. This is after you install. You go to all programs and ST Microelectronics, diffuse and Diffuse demonstration actually. Uh, you'll get to this screen right here um, and you notice that there's no devices and at this point we want to plug our Nano in. So we plug that in USB and then while holding the down arrow we want to flick the power switch on so it'll boot up and uh, I'm running a Mac here so we're going to connect to the Windows side. And so uh, Windows has found it. Now at this point I already installed my drivers. If you don't have drivers installed it'll ask you where the drivers are. Uh, let me show you because this program installs them for you. Uh, if you go to my computer, um, if you go to your C drive, your program files, uh, if you go down to uh, ST Microelectronics, and software, Diffuse and driver, depending on if you have a 32 bit machine or a 64 bit machine, both of the versions are in there. You can just select the driver folder and Windows will uh, automatically pick the right one for you. So, after you get that done, uh, this leaves you sitting right here. So, we have our device in DFU mode, and what you want to do is select the internal flash. Um, we want to verify after the download and uh, this DSO Benef firmware right here, this zip file, we want to unzip those so we can just take this guy here and then we can just drag these onto the desktop and yes we want to do that. And we can close this out. So now uh, internal we want to verify for download. We're going to choose one of the files we just extracted. Uh, there's two files that you need to upload here. There's an app file and a library file. It doesn't matter which one you do first. We'll just do the app one first. Um, it already exists, do I want to replace it? Yes. Now once we're at this point, we can click Upload. And it'll say, do you want to continue? It's in DFU mode, we want to say yes. At this point, it'll erase the flash and rewrite it. Upload successful, that's a good message. And then we still need to do the library, so if we click Choose, and click the library, and click Save, do you want to replace it? Yes, we do. Okay, Verify, Internal, we'll go ahead and Upload and click continue and that's it and so uh, this might be a little bit slower if you haven't done it before I already have this firmware in here and so at this point uh, you can go ahead and quit and then just unplug your nano and then power off and back on and you will have the Benef 3.62 firmware installed Hi guys, Jeremy from the Custom Geek here, and we are going to do a little, just a little walkthrough with the DSO Nano, uh, the version 2. So uh, this is it. It comes in a nice little case that I've traveled with a lot. Uh, it keeps the scratches off the screen and the dust off it. So um, we're going to start by the front here. We have an up and down button, uh, an OK or enter button, and then a left and right button. Uh, if we go to the top, we have an A button and a B button. Uh, on the top here, if we flip over to the side, there's our power button. Uh, there's a nice place for like a wrist strap here. Uh, if we go to the bottom, we have our SD card slot, micro SD card, so we can uh, we can get some information off the device. Uh, also works as a card reader uh, through the USB port, which is located on this side. And then here we have two 8th inch stereo jacks. One of them is the probe for the scope itself, and then the other one is a frequency generator uh, that has an output on it. So. Uh, that's the machine. The back is basically just has the name of it on it. Uh, nice stainless steel. And so if we power it up, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it says Ben F, which is the firmware that I'm running. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that, about that later. Um, this is a great, uh, a great firmware. 
uh, it's a lot easier to navigate than the stock one and handles files on the SD card a lot nicer so uh, we'll cover that in just a minute. Also wanted to mention that this comes with a nice little stand which works great on my bench put that in there it's easy to read not so much with this camera angle here I'm using an overhead camera but uh, it's really nice and it also comes with two sets of probes um, the sets of probes have these little eighth inch stereo jacks uh, which is nice because if they break you can get these things anywhere and then you have a pair of pins that go on a breadboard and you also have a pair of clips that can clip on leads uh, it's the spring loaded kind so they're actually very nice I haven't really had a chance to go and get new ones so those work really well to start off with I'm gonna go ahead and put our probe in here uh, put our clips in our probe and I'm gonna put those little pins on our frequency out generator and then basically I'm just gonna join the two and holy matrimony here so if we can just uh, hook this up kinda of to itself so to speak uh, you can see that the screen there's something on there because it shares a common ground so if we have this which is basically we're measuring the frequency output of this guy here we can have something a little bit to work with here so uh, I want to start at the top uh, this is the uh, mode and the trigger mode uh, you have some time measurements here uh, this is a measurement field which is shows a lot more information if you scroll through, through some things uh, you have your battery uh, indicator here that'll say USB if it's plugged in um, we have our trigger our voltage change and um, this is the indicator of what's selected up here uh, this side is kind of your menu over here and so we're going to start with the very first one which is voltage now if you push OK there's only one thing in this menu which is your voltage adjustment here so um, these are to scroll through the menu and then these guys are to change what the menu item is so if we increase the voltage obviously the uh, the drawings get smaller the graph gets smaller and as we decrease the voltage it gets bigger um, very quickly on the top here the A button is always stop and run so if we freeze this you notice that the auto turns red instead of green this is run this is freeze and then while it's frozen of course we took the probe out but there's no uh, there's no measurement right there if we start it up again you can see that it measures nothing until we put some signal into it basically on the next menu we have a time adjustment here and uh, there's only one thing in that menu and then if we increase or decrease uh, we can zoom in or out or zoom in on the graph being displayed next we have some cursor adjustments and if we um, if we click the menu now we have more than one thing here so we have our voltage one cursor now if that's selected uh, this will say V1 down here in the bottom we can make our adjustment here uh, to raise or lower that cursor so we can kinda of put it right there on the, on the on that top uh, trigger there and then if we go down to V2 uh, you'll notice that this changes here it gives you a voltage reading of what that is uh, which is down here you see this is the ground plane here this little uh, blue arrow so we can raise that guy up and then we can get a voltage reading here this is the voltage reading that's uh, zero volts and this is the difference between the two which is 4.08 volts we can also go to ground position and we can actually change the ground position of the graph so we can basically shift the whole thing up or down um, the vertical position uh, we can change the, the vertical position of the graph and shift the whole thing up and down um, that's not the same as a ground position and then a reference position uh, which if we don't have a reference file loaded but we'll do that later though the next menu is our trigger one and trigger two cursor and trigger position um, so trigger one cursor again are these lines so you can measure the time in between pulses so if we put this here on the following edge and then we go here and we select the other trigger and then we push that guy away over here you can get an idea of the timing of these cycles here we put this on the next falling edge and it's about 500 uh, microseconds which is a one kilohertz signal so it makes sense and then if we go to trigger position if we stop this graph um, again it's red it's not running we can uh, we can kind of go back and forward in time so if we um, if we if you're monitoring something that changed and you missed it you can freeze it and then go back and forth and just scan the, the type of signal or if you have a different kind of signal that's not uh, so boring I guess you can kind of go back and see uh, the different changes in the signal next we have trigger mode and um, 
there's trigger mode, trigger, trigger level, trigger sensitivity, and then trigger kind. Um, I'm not going to cover too much on this. Auto is basically automatic. Um, sing is basically it waits for a signal, and then as soon as there's a signal, it stops and freezes it. That's why this is red, because it was waiting for a signal. So if we, um, if we turn this on and it's green, it's waiting for a signal. As soon as it sees a signal, it'll freeze that. So you can capture, uh, if you're waiting for something to happen, this will wait until it happens and then capture it for you. There's also, a, um, if you hit the B button in trigger mode, what it'll do is it'll fit. So it'll automatically zoom and, and give you a nice, uh, a nice clear picture of what's going on there. Trigger level is uh, you can raise or, or lower the trigger level manually. What you want your actual trigger to be to actually trigger the, the scope. Um, trigger sensitivity, how sensitive you want it to be. Uh, how, how many millivolts you can see down here you can go up or down with that um, and then trigger kind if you want rising or falling you know it's this little icon up in the corner here um, it's pointing down now and then you can uh, do raising or falling so you, you see the the graph shift there whether it starts on rising or falling all right next is uh, ME is for measurement and measurement is all kinds of cool stuff you can have frequency uh, your duty, uh, voltage RMS, your pulse count, your pulse width, and then all your voltage stuff here. Um, and you can scroll through those on top here, and so you can have whatever measurement you want on top. Uh, you hit, this is what it is, and this is what the measurement is here. You can see these guys change as I scroll through. Um, I kind of keep mine on frequency, but another cool thing you can do is, like, when you have this menu up, or you're just on this menu, if you push the B button, It'll bring this up, and then you saw that that little guy down, uh, down there. It'll screen capture all this information. So if you have, if this is something relevant to my project, and I want to capture this information, I can just push the B button, and it'll just simply copy this the bitmap of the screen to my micro SD card. Kind of cool. Next, we have file input output. So if we go in this menu here, uh, the first one is save image, and what that does is simply saves an image. So uh, you could see here that. Uh, this is uh, 54, it's a bitmap image. When I push that, it'll slowly turn red until it gets done writing and then auto increment to 55. I can manually write over these guys. If it's red, that means that that file already exists. So uh, automatically it'll keep incrementing and just go to the next one. So this is 55, it'll just go to 56. Um, I can, uh, I'm going to start from, from the bottom here. Uh, if we like this setup here, we can save this profile. And if we click Save Profile, you'll notice down here the first thing it says is Flash. We can save this as a configuration file on the SD card. But if we save it to Flash, uh, what that'll do, if we push a B here to confirm to save, um, what that'll do is it'll save it to the device. And so whatever changes you made, the next time you turn this on, if you move the ground plane or the voltage or the time, it'll go to those... Uh, settings which is kind of nice so you can kind of tweak it the way you want it and then save it and then it'll do the same thing every time you don't have to fuss with it or go to go to load a configuration file you can load configuration files uh, if you have something special you want to do though as well and another thing we can do here is if we go to um, uh, if we go to load reference and you see these XML files here if we go down and load one uh, I think this is the right one here yeah, I load. I saved this earlier. This is an AC, uh, a sine wave that I loaded earlier. That reference will stay on there, and it's not just a bitmap because you can go and you can, um, you can expand the time or voltage on the graph, and it'll resample this compared to what this is. There's my waveform there, and then if we uh, if we zoom in here, we can we can compare uh, the live what's going on, which is in the blue, versus the purple, which is the loaded waveform from earlier. So um, that's that's a nice thing. It's not really it's a single channel scope by all means, but if you save one waveform and then you measure something else, you can kind of compare the two. Uh, it's kind of a a long way of doing it, but it's it's kind of neat because it makes it possible. Uh, if we go back down here, um, these are also XML files, so you can export those if you if you write software for that. Um, it is a pretty just a basic XML file there. And then you can uh, you can save these images as well too. And again, this will uh, same way it saves the pictures. It'll auto increment the next one. 
uh, red when it's writing and then uh, white when it's ready. Um, your, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, show reference. You can just show or hide the reference. And then uh, let's actually show that. And let me show you the next thing, which is our frequency out. So this was uh, a 60 hertz sine wave right here, just from an AC adapter on the wall. So our frequency out, um, you can see our B key will change the digits of what adjustment is being. So you can uh, you can kind of tweak this a, a lot. Um, we can turn this down to uh, 60 hertz. And let's zoom out just a little bit here. And you can see that that almost matches up there because this is a 60 hertz sine wave and this is a 60 hertz digital uh, signal. So it's kind of neat. And then again, you can go down to frequency output and you can get fancy here and say, I want to go 55 hertz or 61 or whatever your heart's content. Uh, this goes down to 10 hertz and it goes up to 1 megahertz for uh, for frequency generation. So, of course, that's that. Um, so that's it for, for that. Hey guys, uh, one more thing I wanted to show you here is about the frequency output. Um, I did a video on PWM and how that works here, and I have an LED. Sorry, it's kind of bright for the camera here, but uh, it's hooked up to the same wires that my frequency generator is, and you can see on the meter how it's kind of half on, half off. So if I, I mentioned before that we can adjust our frequency output here so we can really tone this down, you know, into, you can see this this LED really starting to blink here. I don't know how it's coming across in the video in the end here, but let's turn this back up to um, 1K. Uh, if we go here, we can adjust the duty of it. So uh, we were just adjusting the frequency of the pulses. Now we're adjusting the width of the pulses, and it's at 50%. You can see the same time they're off, they're on, then off and on. Uh, if we increase or decrease that number, if we increase that, they're on a whole lot more. They're high a lot longer than 80% of the time, and they're low 20% of the time. Now, if you look at this LED, I don't know how well, know how well this is going. But if I turn this down here, it's going to uh, look a lot dimmer. I'll turn this all the way down to one. I know it's still probably blowing away the camera here, but you can see how it dims. And then if I if I turn this up, this ramps up the same way that we quote unquote dim LEDs using PWM output on an Arduino. So anyway, this I forgot that I want to put that in there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more last thing is the other menu. So in the other menu, we have uh, the buffer priority, um, equal or post. We have the sample speed, uh, which is normal and fast. We have the display mode, which is average and peak, which is really all, really only applies to uh, oversampled signals. It's not, uh, uh, it's it's for nothing else than other than over oversampled signals. Uh, probe attenuation, uh, you can go ten times, or one. Uh, so that's that guy there. And then grid intensity, uh, if you like squares, or if you do not like squares, or anything in between. So there's, I believe, eight eight different levels for that. And um, your calibration gain, and then if you want to save your calibration, uh, you go ahead in there, and, and then you you go ahead and save it. Okay, I checked the calibration on mine; it was pretty accurate, so I didn't mess with it. I didn't have to, so um, that's the other menu there. So uh, again, this is Jeremy from the CustomGeek.com, and thanks for watching.